The Ruby Rings. Yes, that's the story that I'll be sharing today on another episode of the COVID-19 Ed Podcast. This is Victoria Wolders, your host, and I'm so happy that you took the time out of your day to listen to another episode. So we are going to start off with taking some time to listen to a new virtue. I hope you enjoy it. To part one, are you comfy? Are you cozy? Well, get ready to listen. Well, welcome to part one. Today, we get to focus on the word gratitude. Yes, gratitude. Gratitude means a strong feeling of appreciation for someone or something. I'll say it one more time. Gratitude, a strong feeling of appreciation for someone or something. Hmm, when was the last time you were grateful? When was the last time you showed to another person that you were thankful for what they've done for you? Think about what you've eaten in the last day. Who's prepared the food for you? Who made the food? Perhaps, what grocery store did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come from before then? Was it from a farm long, far away? Was it from maybe someone who had made the cheese by hand? Maybe it was from a factory worker. Gratitude is a very important part of our lives. And sometimes we get so busy that we forget to thank the people who have created the things around us. Take some time today to look around the room that you're in. Think about where everything was made and all the people that it took to provide for you to look at these items and pieces of furniture. Gratitude. It's important. Okay, we are now going to move on to part two, our activity and story. Hi everyone, welcome back to part two today. We are going to create something amazing, and let's get craft, 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 bye. Hi everyone. We're here in part two. This is an awesome opportunity for us to read another empathy tale and do a lesson. So today's story is called The Red Ruby Rings. This week, we're focusing on conventions. That means we're working on capitals and periods and spelling. So today, let's work on developing our vocabulary in the story. Then, some art to go along with it. Okay, so... What you're going to do today is while you're listening to the story, you are going to create artifacts. Artifacts. Artifacts are items that you've heard about in the story. So for example, we know there are red ruby rings in the story. So you're going to take some time to draw the red ruby rings. Most likely, you'll need some pencil crayons and some felts, and maybe you might even need some maybe pastels or some other funky types of materials that you might have around the house. Today, we're focusing on art. So, if you can remember, while you're listening, you're going to write or draw artifacts. After you're done, make sure you label them. I'd like all the older kids to please write a couple sentences for each artifact. So, for example, the red ruby rings. Older students, you can take some opportunities to write a... A sentence that could be something like that. The red ruby rings uh, gleamed beautifully on the floor of the water troll kingdom tunnel. Now I just used an example. It may have not happened in the story, but that's just an example. So take the artifact, create a lovely descriptive sentence with it for those students that are able to do it. Okay, then after you're done, Make sure you double check your spelling, make sure you double check your capitals and your periods if you wrote those sentences, and make sure you get an adult to double check it. Okay, now, without further ado, here is the story, The Red Ruby Rings. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the Oak and Eagle Kingdom, in the land of the Southern Eagle, there lived a fairy. She had once lived in the magical forest in the land... Eagle. Yet, 
chose to move to the land of the Southern Eagle because it was warmer. She had some very special powers. Her powers were that she was able to find out where all the beautiful rubies were throughout the land of the Southern Eagle. She was named the Red Ruby Fairy throughout the land. There were so many rubies. The Southern Eagle was known to be a place where it was dry and deserted. She would go for long rocks along the deserts, and she would wave her hand over the sand. Once in a while, there'd be some glistening in the sand. She'd start digging. She'd find these beautiful red rubies. She'd bring them into her cottage. She had such a beautiful collection of these beautiful red rubies. She wanted to have every single red ruby in the land, so she began to continue to collect them. She started to realize that they were quite large. She decided she was going to start making rings. So she started to make these beautiful, intricate red ruby rings. They were so bright and beautiful. One day she was making these rings, and she was angry because they, this one wasn't perfect. As she looked closer, closely, her breath went into the ring. She breathed more onto the ring, and the light breath went in. As the breath seeped into the edges of the ruby, magically, it started to cry. She decided to to wear this ring because it looked so special and it felt so special. However, the cry was the sound of a young child crying in her room with the echo of grieving pain, as if she had lost a friend that had been broken by distress and would not ever be the same again. The cry was hard to hear, but there was something about the cry that resonated with her. Her neighbor said, Oh, I've decided to come by and give you some flowers from my garden. The red ruby fairy said, Oh, well, I should give you something. She leaned over and picked up one of her rings. She said, Here's a ring for you. She glanced over at the ring that was on her finger, and it started glistening very red. It was beautiful. Her friend said, Oh, thank you so much for this beautiful ring. I will wear it forever. She said, Oh, well, it's a gift. From me to you. Thank you very much for giving me the flowers. So over time, the fairy began to collect more and more red rubies. Over time, she became more selfish. She realized that if she started to sell them or give them away, other people would have them. However, if she sold them, she could also make lots and lots of money. She started to go to each of the villages and she started to ask for a lot of money for these rings. A lot of the impoverished people in the land said, these are way too expensive for us. We can't, we can't afford them. They looked down at her ring, and it was always turning different colors, dark, dark colors. And the more she wore it, the more it would turn black. The ring started to permanently turn black and was very faintly red. She wondered why this was going on, and often the ring itself would start to cry. How was this ring turning black? How was this ring crying? She just tried to ignore the blackness of it and tried to ignore the crying. She went to village to village to sell her beautiful red ruby rings. And then all of a sudden, one of the villagers, who had been a very close friend with her with her, fa her as a when she was a young fairy, said, I'd like to buy a ring for Mother's Day. The red ruby fairy said, well, that'll be nine, $900. I know that you've just found them in the land. Are you sure you want to charge that much? Responded her friend. The red ruby fairy got angry. She said, are you accusing me of ripping you off? Her friend replied, I just think that's too expensive. 
When you start focusing more on greed and how much money you can make, you can also often lose sight of relationships and you're getting really angry at me. Her friend then walked away. The red ruby fairy looked down to see the ring was now completely black. As her friend started to walk away, she turned around and said, I don't need your friendship. If you're going to choose to hurt me, then you can go keep your red rubies. I just think you're greedy at this time and you're asking way too much money for the rings. Most of us villagers cannot afford that, but yet they're so beautiful. We would buy them if they were cheaper and they were inexpensive. The red ruby fairy glared at her and turned her head and walked away. So over the next couple months, the red ruby fairy continued to sell her beautiful red rubies for a very expensive cost. Over time, the red rubies started to turn black and crumble because her heart was getting bitter, angry, and greedy. And her breath would often fall on these rings. Soon she had enough money, though, to move into a castle. The people who started to buy these red rubies came back to her. And they said, the greed and envy have spread through our village. They, the people have noticed that you are angry. And often when they are given the red rubies, they, they are red. But now they are starting to turn black. It looks to me that the envy and greed that you have transfer from your breath into the red rubies. And now they are with the people. They would breathe on the red rubies to make them shiny. Yet, what would happen? Their hearts were turning cold and dark because of the anger you have given to them. The red rubies are now black. Many people came back to the red ruby and said, We don't want these rings anymore. The red ruby fairy said, I don't know what happened. I think this is your fault, not mine. The people started to get angry because their black, dark stones would now cry. Some villagers, through their expensive now black gems, threw them in the river because they couldn't handle the crying and the pain that they would hear like a child crying in a corner. Later that year, the red ruby fairy was in her castle surrounded by black crying rubies that were located in the box beside a window. A traveler knocked at her door and said, I have some flowers for you. The red ruby fairy said, I'm very sad. I remember a year ago I was brought flowers and... I gave you a red ring. She looked at the lady and she realized it was her old friend that she had originally received flowers from. The woman looked at the red ring and it was glowing and it was beautiful, beautifully red still. The fairy said, I can't believe it's still red. It's the only one that's red. All the others have turned black from breath of anger and resentment and many of the stones cry like children in the corner of a room she said these are magical red rubies these are relationship red rubies they change color because of our hearts if people are using these rubies for empathy compassion and kindness they will stay red yet as soon as they start changing and the owner starts changing his or her hearts then they will turn black because of the breath that the person breathes these red rubies came from my heart of our land in the water troll tunnels. They are magical. They have risen above and are embedded in the deserts. You were gifted an amazing gift to be able to pick these red rubies up from the desert. The red ruby fairy was broken. She said, you are the only one left that has a bright red ruby. 
All of them had even either been thrown in the river, had been kept on their fingers, black, or I have them, and they are crying in my corner of my castle. Would you teach me your ways, my friend? Help me understand what it means to be kind and to help and to be grateful for what I have rather than wanting more and needing more money. The traveler said, I am your friend. I am glad you remember me, and that is the first step to building kindness in your heart. Just at that moment, the fairy looked down, and she looked at her ring. Moments before she opened the door to her friend, her ring was black as night. But she looked at the ring, and it was now red. It was stunning red, as if the sun was the bloom of a beautiful, sorry, if it was the blossoming of a beautiful sunset rose. The neighbor looked at her and said, Together, we can continue to grow our red rubies. We will learn to share and learn to be kind so that those that have the black red rubies, sorry, the black rubies, will turn into red again. We will learn together. The red ruby uh, fairy called a meeting with all the villagers. The villagers came together. She said, let us dig out the red rubies from the river. Let us take them from the corners of our houses and from the fingers of our hands. Let us come together and let's learn the power of the red rubies and how they can help our community know if we are caring for each other. This was a powerful tool to bring, build relationships and restore relationships. The red rubies were restored and they're beautiful, beautifully shone that day and from then on. And it was because they grew from their suffering. And the people, together, harvested more red rubies and gave away more red rubies. And the red ruby fairy and her old friend, who handed her the, the, the bouquet of flowers, grew in a deep relationship with each other. And the red ruby fairy soon began a garden around her castle and started to hand out flowers to other people. The village soon came to be known as the beautiful Red Ruby Village. And its legacy was built off the brokenness of the blackness and the greed and the envy that once embittered the village, but now was its legacy and was its witness of how beautiful a community can be and be restored with people choosing to be kind and caring with each other. The end. Hi everyone. It's time to innovate part three. Woo. Hi everyone. Welcome to part three. This is an opportunity for you to do an extension lesson. An extension lesson allows you to be able to create something that's a little bit above and beyond what we just did. Okay, so the red ruby ring story. Rubies and precious gems can be very expensive and hard to come by. Today you're going to do some research on precious gems and jewels. Then you're going to select three of your favorite. Take some time then to write a paragraph. Where are they from? How much are they? Then you can draw and design the beautiful gems that you've picked. For those that want to extend even more, take some time to learn about scientific terminology such as the hardness and weight and luster of these different gems and jewels. So for those younger students, take some time to learn about three different gems and jewels and take some opportunities to maybe write some descriptive words. And for those students that need a little bit more higher academic work, then take some time to write some sentences about where are they from and how much they are. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. Take some time today.
to enjoy researching some gems and jewels from around the world. If you need to put a pause now, feel free to do that. Okay, we're now going to wrap up our session. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed learning today about the red ruby rings. I sure did. Well, until next time, remember, less stir- <laughs> let's try that again. Less screens, listen, create, and innovate. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Victoria Wolders, your COVID-19 ed podcast host, signing off.